Okay. 487, you calling in for a session? Yes, I am. Okay, what's your first name and state you calling from? Uh, my first name is Hugh, and I'm calling from North Carolina. Okay, now how do you spell your first name? H-U-E. Oh, Hugh. Now, now, now I'm in North. I'm in North Carolina, brother Hugh. What what part of North Carolina are uh, you you in? Uh, Kingston. Well, you're my neighbor. I'm in Raleigh. We yes, not far from yes. each other. Just a little bit over an hour. Yeah. So, how how did you find out about me? Well, my wife uh, uh, works in New York, and she listens to you all the time. What? Uh, yes, yeah, she. Uh, she called me, and, and uh, about two weeks ago, I started listening to you. And oh, right. I, I was really blessed by by what I heard. And um, she uh, gave me the YouTube uh, address, and I go on YouTube, and I will listen. And uh, when I you start teaching those spirit spouses, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to call her and uh, and talk to her. Now, uh, I'm a pastor, been uh, pastored for 42 years, and uh, uh, I'm in um, a city outside of Kingston, and when you start teaching those spirit spouse, you know, it brought up some things about my entire life to where, you know, I've been battling uh, lust demons ever since I was a child. And even in my calling, I'm still battling those things. And you never get to the point where you're, you're satisfied with where you're at because of the fact that, you know, you always want to make sure that you're where God wants you to be. And that's okay. why. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, now, now I did. Now, now, can you hear me, brother? Um, Pastor here. Can Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Can Can you hear me? If 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 you can hear me, I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you, brother Hugh. So, can you do a favor and hang up and call back? I sure will. I sure will. Okay. No, 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 no. I, I, I hear you now. Okay. 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 I hear you now. No, that's that's spirit wife. That's spirit wife doing. Spirit wife don't want you to get free, but you're going to get free today. Can Can you hear me? Okay. Well, okay. It's happened again. So do me a favor. If you can hear me, go ahead and hang up and call back. Right. Okay. Do me a favor. Hang up and call back right quick. Okay. Okay. If you can hear me, I cannot hear you. So just hang up and then call back. Okay, you you're still on the line. I cannot hear you. So I need for you to hang up and call back. All right. Let me let me drop them and then. Uh, okay, I had to drop him. And then, then he'll know to call back, and then everything will be okay. Now, sometimes these spirits will interfere with the phone line because they don't want the person to get set free, but that is the will of God. They will get set free. So we have to continue to be patient and trust God and be adamant about getting free. And by us being adamant about getting free, then those spirits have to have to turn that connection loose because they are hindering him on his end as far as the connection because I see Tutti is still on the line here. So uh, so hopefully, um, give him a few more minutes, he will he will call back in. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell he's, he's a much older gentleman, and God definitely wants to set, to set him free. He's a pastor. Praise God. You know, it took now, they're only about an hour, a little bit over about an hour, away from me, and it took his wife going way out to New York uh, to to find out about somebody who was just a little over an hour away. But praise God. Praise God. Okay, he's back now. Okay. All right. All right. 
past pastor? Yes. Can you hear me? I, I really don't see you on my control. Okay. Okay, I see you now. All right, Pastor. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So so you can go ahead and uh continue what what you were saying. Yes, and and you know, over over the years, um uh while being in ministry, I've always, you know, uh, uh I've been <laughs> I, I bind your spirit in Jesus' name. You 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 turn loose this phone line in the name of Jesus. In the Pastor name of Jesus. Yes, Pastor. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Let, 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 let me go ahead and, and, and do your deliverance because the spirit wife and spirit snakes are, are really interfering with with your connection because they don't want you set free. Okay. Exactly. So let so let me go ahead and do your deliverance and then you can uh, share with us your testimony. Okay. 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 All right. Well. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead now. Now, now, as I'm as I'm doing your deliverance and 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 I taking phase out where you can't hear me or I can't hear you, I'm gonna continue in your deliverance because I'm really not talking to you. I'm talking to those spirits. Okay. Hallelujah. So, uh, so you just even though you might not be able to hear me, you still hang on. Don't hang up. Just hang on. Okay. Yes, you will. Amen. So I'm going to pray for you, and I'm going to speak this disconnection. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you again for this opportunity to minister your love and grace and mercy to your son, Brother Hugh. Father, I thank you that every plan, every purpose, every ideal that you have ordained to take place in his life and only bringing glory to your son, Jesus Christ, it shall be fulfilled in and through and by him in Jesus' name. And there are captives that is that have been held in darkness, and it's your will through his deliverance, through his testimony, that they will be delivered as they hear him proclaim your goodness to them, Father. It shall come to pass. In Jesus' name. And I ask you to give Brother Hugh more wisdom, more revelation, more understanding of who he is in your son Jesus and also who Jesus is in him. Father, I thank you that every door that the enemy have closed out to Brother Hugh, in Jesus' name, I open those doors in Jesus' name never to be closed by the enemy again. In the name of Jesus. And doors that the enemy opened that was not the Father's will to be open. I also close every door and fill them with the blood of Jesus. Never, ever, in Jesus' name, to be reopened. Thank you, Father, for your grace, your loving kindness, your compassion, your mercy. And setting this captive totally free to truthfully, spiritually worship and serve you in spirit and truth. Father, I thank you in Jesus' mighty name thank you, Jesus. for your loving presence who's with us now. Your presence on this conference line. Your presence working through the internet connection. Your presence working through the phone connection. And I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name that your spirit have a free flow in every area, every matter in this case, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. So right now, in Jesus' name, I command you, spirit wife, come to attention now, in Jesus' name, and pass all your loads, and you get out of God's house. You go. So come out. Come out. Come out of his mind. Come out of his mind. Come out of his mind. Pack your loads and get out of his mind in Jesus' name. You get out, out, out of his will. Come out of his will. Loose his will. Loose his will. Let him go in Jesus' name. You leave his motion. Come out of his emotion. Pack your loads. Get out of his emotion. Now, for the blood of Jesus commands you to loose his emotion. Come out of his emotion. And you come out of his body. Come out of his body. Leave his body. Take sickness with you. Take death with you. Loose him. Every spirit that belongs to you. Loose him. Let him go. Come out of his body in Jesus' name. And not only that, you come out of his phone line. You come out of his connection. You come out of his business. You come out of his affairs. You come out. 
out in Jesus' name. For the blood of Jesus commanded and commanded you to lose him. Lose him. Completely. Lose him completely. Take your shackles off him. Untie his hands. Untie his feet. Take them chains from around his neck. Take your crown off his head. Take your rings with you. You lose him and you let him go. Holy Ghost, I call upon you in Jesus' name to search and destroy darkness who dominantly is still holding on to his will. Burn by your mighty fire. Burn every spirit in his will. They exhaust and lift themselves against God's knowledge. Set them all ablaze. Set them ablaze, Holy Ghost. Burn, burn in his will. Ransack his will by your mighty fire in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, fire, burn, burn darkness that's holding on to into his mind. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn those negative images and pictures that's been embedded into the conscious, the subconscious, and the memory of his mind. Burn, Holy Ghost. Let's ransack his mind. Ransack his mind. Burn unbelief and doubt. Burn, burn, burn mental spirit. Burn confusing spirit. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn every spirit that's not of you. Every spirit. Burn, Holy Ghost. Just continue to ransack his mind. Wash, baptize his mind in and with the blood of Jesus. Wash and baptize his will in and with the blood of Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost, fire, burn, burn, burn his emotion, burn, ransack his emotion, burn every spirit that's clinging, holding on to his emotion. They don't feel like you, they don't move, walk, talk, act, react, or sound like you. Burn, Holy Ghost, set emotions ablaze. Burn, Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Purify his emotion in and with the blood of Jesus. Wash his emotions in and with the blood of Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost, fire, continue to burn, burn in his body. Burn that sickness in his body. Burn death that's in his body. Burn every spirit that is not of you, every spirit that dumpling hiding deep, deep down in his body. Send my blaze. Send my blaze, Holy Ghost. Burn in his eyes. Burn every spirit that looks out through the window of his eye. Set his Burn eyes ablaze. Set that lust ablaze. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn in his eyes. Burn in his mouth. Burn in his mouth. Burn in his mouth. Burn in his nose. Burn in his nose. Burn in his ear. Burn in his ear. Burn up and down his throat. Burn up and down his throat. Burn, 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 burn in Jesus' name. Burn in his belly. Burn those snakes and eggs in his belly. Burn every spirit in his belly. They look like animals. Insects and sea creatures burn in his belly, burn, just ransack his belly, ransack his private air, ransack his rectum, burn, Holy Ghost. Don't leave no area untouched in his belly. Purify his belly by your mighty fire. Baptize, submerge, and wash and rinse his belly in and with the blood of Jesus. Burn up and down his arm. Burn up and down his arm. Burn up and down his legs. Burn up and down his back. Up and down his chest. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn on top of his head. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn, 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 burn in Jesus' name. Burn even on the bottom of his feet. Burn, burn on his toes. Burn his toes. Burn his fingers. Burn his feet, his hands. Don't leave no area untouched in his body. Set his body ablaze by your mighty fire. Wash, rinse, and baptize his body in and with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. In the spirit realm. Every relationship in the spirit realm. The Father did not connect him to. I disconnect in Jesus' name. I disconnect him from that evil spirit wife. Those evil spirit children. Even that evil spirit man, that entire evil spirit family, I disconnect him from every relationship in the spirit realm that the Father did not connect him to. I disconnect. I disconnect him from that family idolatry and witchcraft. I disconnect him because the blood of Jesus disconnect him. The blood of Jesus set Thank him free. You, the blood of Jesus has given him Thank and you, his Father. ancestors. The blood of Jesus has forgiven them Jesus. all of their iniquity. The blood Thank of you. Jesus set them all totally free in Jesus' mighty oh, name. Jesus. Even in the natural realm, every relationship the Father did not connect him to. I disconnect in Jesus' Jesus. name. In Jesus' name, Pastor Hugh, be totally free to serve and worship the Lord. Him only will you serve in spirit and truth. Be totally free in your mind. Be totally free in your mind. Totally free in your mind. Be totally free in your will. Be totally free in your emotion. Be totally free in your dream. Be totally free in your vision. Be totally free in your business, in your affairs, and be totally free in your body. 
to serve and worship the Lord, and him only will you serve in spirit and truth. Be free in Jesus' mighty name. Be free. Father, fear Pastor Hugh. Fear Pastor Hugh to overflow with your spirit. Fill his will with your spirit. Fill his mind with your spirit. Fill his emotions with your spirit. Fill his dreams with your spirit. Fill his vision with your spirit. Fill his affairs with your spirit. Fill his business with your spirit. And fill his entire body with your spirit, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father, for setting this captive totally free to truthfully spiritually worship you in Jesus' name. And, Father, I also pray for Pastor Hugh Howe. Holy Spirit, go in his house right now. Search and destroy darkness. Find all their dark hiding place and destroy yes. by your mighty fire. Go in every corner, crack, and crevice of the house. Go in every room and look under every bed, around the bed, over the bed, or top of the bed, between the sheets and the mattress, the front and the foot of the bed, and destroy. Go in every closet, close place, and destroy darkness. Destroy them, Holy Spirit. Destroy all their hiding place. Destroy the objects that they are resting on right now. Destroy by your mighty fire. Even outside our house, go around the house, even over the under house. Go underground. Destroy objects planted underground, objects thrown in the water. Destroy by your mighty fire. Destroy every negative word and curse word that has been sent against him and his family. Destroy by your mighty fire. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father for setting this captive totally free to truthfully worship you spiritually in Jesus' mighty name. Totally free to truthfully serve the Lord in spirit and truth. you free. He heard your cry and he fulfilled your heart's desire. And you are totally free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your holy name. Glory Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, Pastor Hugh, as I was praying, what was you experiencing as I was praying? I, I experienced so many burdens that, you know, you don't even talk about mm-hmm. uh, being lifted. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the battles that you've been battling for years. And mm-hmm. You've asked people to uh, pray for you. And it seemed like um, you could never get delivered. And uh, something that you've been looking for for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I really, really felt like God is finally that's the word I've been yeah, asking him to do yeah and uh, I asked him I keep asking God why why uh, why did I keep going through these things why why it seems as like though my ministry mm-hmm. get to a point of seeming like it's it's going to be successful and then all of a sudden it just blows up and mm-hmm. uh, destroys my marriage. Is, you know, I've had multiple marriages. It seems mm-hmm. like even when my ministry is going well, my marriage is messed up. And, and I've, over the years, just asked God, you know, what's wrong with me? You know, uh, I don't like to look at my brothers. I have five brothers as pastors. That, you know, they've been married years, and, and the marriage is successful. But, uh, and I just went to God and said, God, what is it about me? And it seems like I'm always in a lonely place. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I just I just thank the Lord that when I heard uh, you teach, I felt like this was where I needed to be. Mm-hmm. And I told my wife, I tried to call you yesterday, but I got on too late. And I told my wife, I said, 
I'm not going to stop until Amen. Until I I get an opportunity to talk. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you don't mind me asking, Pastor Hugh, what what is your age? I'm 62. Yeah, okay, I thought so. Yeah. Wow. God can do some mighty, mighty miracles and workings through you. And you go and you start with sharing with everybody the goodness that God has done for you and setting you totally free. Because, Brother Pastor Hugh, that's all you need. You need to be delivered. You've never been delivered from the demons that took advantage of your lack of knowledge in serving the Lord. You've never been delivered from them living in your soul realm, which is your mind, will, emotion, or your body. And as long as they were there, they, their, their intention is always to kill, to steal, and destroy our destiny in Christ Jesus. They wanted you to give up on the Lord. That's what they want. That's why can they, they um, made sure things did not work out the way that you were expecting it to work out because they actually wanted you to curse God and die. That's what they want. But, but you refused to do that. And, and, and the grace of God uh, was upon you to just hold on, continue to trust him. And he's the one who led you to the human helper that he had chosen to set you free, uh, uh, to set you free through. So those devils, they are gone. They're no longer no gone. So Thank you just you. share. Be sure now you share your testimony. You shame, you shame this. See, when we share our testimony, we are sh- giving glory to God, and at the same time, we are shaming the devil. Perfect. We are shaming the devil. Because just as if I had never given my testimony, all these thousands upon thousands of people uh, that God uh, allowed to hear my testimony and got set free, they wouldn't have gotten set free because Hallelujah. of me refusing to share my testimony. But because I said, yes, Lord, I will share the goodness that you've done, regardless of how it made my my uh, reputation look, it didn't matter. Jesus That's gave right. up his reputation for me, so I'm willing That's to give it. up mine for his, and I Hallelujah. tell it. However Thank detail you. he wants me to tell, I tell it. Hallelujah. I tell it. And that shames the devil because it explo- exposes his word. And someone else will hear your testimony, especially your member. They will hear your testimony, and they will know the same Jesus Christ who set my pastor free, he will set me free. And they're going to come up to you, Pastor, and they say, Pastor, pray for me. You say, I'm going to pray for you, but I'm going to take it a step farther. I'm praying for you, and now I'm going to, after that, I'm going to confront the devil that is living in your mind, your will, emotion, and body that is causing you to turn away from God. I'm going to confront them and cast them out. You know, that's what we have to do. When, when God work through people, say, pray for me. You say, sure, I would love to pray for you, but I'm going to take it a step further. Uh-huh. So those devils got to be confronted and command to come out because they are thieves. Just like in the natural, you know, the, the, the police officers can, can, can stand out there and, and tell thieves, well, I know you in there, and, and talk to the occupants of the house who's in the That's house it. with the thief. Mm-hmm. But no, they, they take it a step further. They'll talk to the occupants. But, but then they say, okay, now I'm going to arrest those things. You come on out, you see. Mm-hmm. You just can't just pray for the person mm-hmm. and, and, and leave those evil occupants in the house or leave those thieves in the house. Again, yeah. I always remember that thief who's on the outside of the house, who's holding, who's holding occupants captive. The, the, the police officer is not just there to talk to the occupant, but their aim is also to catch those thieves out of that house. So we as ministers of the gospel, that is our aim too. I will pray for you, but at the same time, I'm going to, after I pray for you, I'm going to confront those thieves that are still living in God's house, which that's is true. in your mind, your will, most and body, and I'm commanding them to come out in Jesus' name. And that's what the Lord wants you to do to every member, Pastor, that he sends to your house, that's which true. is his house, which is his church. Remember, that they are his lamb, they are his sheep. And he wants, to, he wants to clean them. So it's okay for you to pray for them, but at the same time, those thieves got them bound, got them held mm-hmm. captive. Just like the thief had you held captive, 
you you had people to pray for you, but you knew you were still bound. You knew That's you right. were still head captain. He said, okay, That's people right. pray for me, but why am I still bound? Because they never confronted the thieves, which is those demons that I live in deep down within, because they hide deep down in there. They down in there. If they never been cast out, Pastor, they're still mm -hmm. in there. You you know this from experience yourself. Exactly. Exactly. You see, now God wants you to to trust him, to trust him and allow him to set his children free. Those right. who he sent to his house, which is sent to your church, he wants you to allow him to set them totally, totally free. And remember, the Lord said, I have given you power right. over right. all the power of the enemy, and they cannot harm you, Pastor Heath. They cannot. You understand? Yes. They I, cannot. That's it. <laughs> Glory. Glory. We choose to believe what Jesus said. He said they cannot. They will that's act right. like they can. They will even that's speak it. like they can. But the Lord said they cannot. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. He said they cannot. That's, that's where I get right. my joy in what Jesus Glory. said. But you don't Glory. have to fear them because it's Jesus who's casting them out. You That's just it. Jesus mouth oh. you his body. You does his action. You speak his word. And it's Jesus himself who throw those devils out. He buys them, snatches them, buys them, and throws them out. <laughs> Lord wants you to believe that he does that, and he do. Then, <laughs> then the members of your church are free. Whoa, they're totally free now to truth and serve the Lord. You're talking about a revival. It will really be a revival. Then yes, they will start yes. coming into your church because they'll go back and share with their friends, you know, how the Lord set them free through their pastor. And they like, wow, I'm going to your church, and I'm going to have your pastor pray for me. Well, that's how you get your church filled, you see. That's it. That's, how you get, that's, it. that's, why, that's how Jesus sends them in. Mm -hmm. you see? But, you got, but it's going to start with you trusting the Lord. And God got to send that one person, that one person first. Say, Pastor, pray for me. Okay, but I'm mm -hmm. going to take it a step further. Jesus Christ is going to deliver you from the thief that got you captive. But I'm going to pray for you first. But now I'm going to be in a conversation, but I'm not talking to you, baby. I'm not talking to you. I'm Ooh. talking to those thieves that got you held captive in this house. <laughs> Praise you. His holy name. You hear me, pal? I hear you. Praise I hear you. you. Oh, I, thank I, I, feel, you I feel it. I feel you heard that. Uh, thing. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. I tell you. know, Lord, something. Thing is, if all the pastors in our state, and not on our state, but other states, we, we, we have that type of mentality. And you're talking about a revival breaking out. That's when yeah. the revival will break out because we, we line the Holy Spirit to do what He does. We allow the Holy Spirit to act. Now, this is the Acts. This, this is the book of Acts. That's, That's why right. right. it was this devil one time through this, through this man, told my husband, said, man, said, there's two books that I'm afraid of in the Bible. I said, what books is that? He said, I'm afraid of Revelation and Acts. I said, uh -huh. I, I could see Revelation. The people are yeah. afraid of Revelation. I said, well, why did he say act? And the right. Lord told me, it's because. That's when my disciple acts. <laughs> On what Ooh. they were thought. <laughs> <laughs> that's when they acted. Oh, that's Lord. That's when they that's, acted. See, that's, that's what you to act. The devil don't know what you're giving up, giving great sermons, you know. That's right. That's and, right. And, and telling people this, telling people that. But if you don't put forth some action and allow the Holy Spirit to manifest his presence in demonstration, oh, the devil is satisfied because he knows yes, he ain't he going is. nowhere. He don't yes, want us is. to act. I mean, you, you know the lot of pastors who talk about the devil being in person, how the Lord through disciples set them free. You know, mm -hmm. that gives up your faith. But then you wait and come here, pastor, you're going to set us free. But that pastor never asked. Mm -hmm. Never asked. And the person goes out and said, man, pastor, you know, talk all that could talk, but I'm bound, but he didn't do anything. I remember uh -huh. with my husband out under this apostle. Every time he turned around, he, now God used to use him mightily mm -hmm. about 20 years ago. And he always was talking about, you know, the goodness of God and what God does. And I was so excited. I was so excited. I would love to hear him talk about it. I would, right. you know, couldn't wait to go to church the next Wednesday night or Sunday morning just to hear him talk about it. He kept talking about it, kept talking about it. And finally, the uh -huh. Lord said, Terry. It's like the Lord shook me. I said, huh? So you notice he always talk about it? I said, yeah. Right. He said, watch this. I said, okay. Yeah. So Pastor Hugh, the next Wednesday night, he was talking about healing, talking about it again, and I'm all excited. Then all of a sudden, this young man came in a wheelchair. 
Okay. Now, the young man didn't stop at the middle of the aisle or the back. He went all the way to the front Lord so that mercy. pastor can see him. Uh, he made sure that pastor see him, and Lord said, watch this. And I'm watching him and the pastor, and I could feel that young man was saying, Pastor, please, you know, speak the word. Speak my healing. Heal me. That's it. Speak the word. Because he was talking about it. And it uh, healed that man's face. His face really was ready for it. Because that's, that's what the word of God do when you teach it. It builds our faith in what Jesus does. So his mm -hmm. face was red. So he was waiting for the pastor to act. And Lord said, watch, watch the pastor. And I watched the pastor, and the pastor looked at him, and he would move his head and look somewhere. It was like the pastor was ignoring the young man. But then I look at the young man, and it was like the young man said, please, pastor, just speak, just, just speak the word to heal me. And then I look at the pastor, and he would ignore the young man, act as though he don't see the young man. And that's oh, when the Lord right. said, he, he talks about it, but he don't act. Don't act. And the young man just, just left the service unhealed. The pastor didn't even try. Ooh. He just ignored the man. You see? We and just see what, that's, what, mm. that's what the devil wants. The devil don't care how much, you, how much you think you can preach or teach. That's he don't want you to act. That's he don't it. want oh, you to bro. act. He don't want you to allow the Holy Spirit to act through you, to cast mm -hmm. him out. Oh, now, let me ask you, Pastor, now, uh, were you experiencing any sickness in your body? Yeah, yes, I have. Because um, I uh, felt that. I felt it was sickness, and that sickness was from those demons. And so yes, when, those, when those demons were cast out, that sickness was gone. Hallelujah. Thank you. They're the one who caused that sickness. I felt that strongly. The Lord told me, he said, the sickness in his body is caused by these demons. See, now, some sickness is not caused by demons. It's caused by because of person problems not eating, eating or drinking properly. Exactly. And, and, mm -hmm, that, and, and those, those type of sickness we can correct by eating and drinking properly. But then there's actual sicknesses that demons they call that happen in a person's body, and that was that was, and they will take advantage of a person who don't eat and drink properly to cause a sickness in your body. They will take advantage of that. But the Lord said the sickness in your body was caused by those demons. I'm so I'm so glad you said that because uh, you know God had spoke to me about taking better care of my body. So mm -hmm. a month and a half ago, I started uh, going to the gym gym every day, mm -hmm. and and I started feeling so much better. Amen. But but, but you know, but today that burden that has been it's gone. gone for years. It's gone for years. That's and, the Holy Spirit. And sometimes you, feel, you know, sitting here, I feel like I've been re rebirthed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all over again. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know. Amen. And once you've been rebirthed, you can't go back to the place mm -mm. Mm -mm. that you once were. And that I, you know, and I'm so excited because there's such a need in my church. I, I mean. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm in a, uh, one of those traditional Baptist churches. Oh, where where people are, or they come to church, but they come bound up and mm -hmm. bound, mm -hmm. and, and 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 they don't know how to get released. And mm -hmm. you know, through my teaching, but not deliver. Right, but not deliver. So mm -hmm. so I'm so excited now that. And, and I'm expecting God to to do a revival. Yes. And it has, and it has to start with me. It has, it has to start with you, with you the head. That's right. That's it. That's it. That's right. And, Amen. And, and you know, I, I just thank the Lord because uh, me and my wife has only been married married four years. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you this. I don't want to talk too long. Okay. But, but uh, after 35 years of pastoring, I went through a wilderness. Mm -hmm. And my wilderness was in Raleigh, North Carolina. Wow. To where I got out of the ministry for six years. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, I, it brought me down to a point of being homeless. I used to sleep in my car. Mm -hmm. I, was, I, was, I was a taxi driver in, in Raleigh. And... It seems as though my back was pressed against the wall. I was 50, 57 years old, and I felt like mm. the ministry was over. And 
And God spoke to me and said, it's not over until I say it's not over. Huh? Amen. Amen. And, and, but God said that he had to teach me. You see, sometimes uh, I answered my calling at 20 years old. And five months later, I was in the pasture. And after three years, being 24 years old, I was a pastor in three of the biggest, uh, bigger churches around Greenville and Tarboro. But sometimes we get stuck in pride. We, we will, God list ele- elevates us, and sometimes we forget. Mm-hmm. We did it. We forget. That's right. And then it, 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 sometimes we start looking at yourself and say, look what I've done, and you have another thing. Mm-hmm. And when God took me out and put me in that wilderness and sleeping in my car and I look back over, you know, my life, I said, I had to deal with you because of your pride. Tell the pride. I had to, I had to mm-hmm. deal with you. I, I, I had to let you know uh, how it is to go through a wilderness. Mm-hmm. And, you know, God taught me some, taught me some things when I went through that wilderness experience. He taught me that I couldn't do nothing but trust him. And in driving cabs, it ministered to other people because what God was doing, he was sending people to my car Mm -hmm. to take long trips. And the other cab drivers asked me, how do you get all those good trips? And I said, it's nobody but God. Mm -hmm. And... And but yet the still I'm sleeping in my car. And I'll say this to you. I was in my car sleep one night and four o'clock in the morning at the bus station. My wife came down, my future wife came down from New York because she was getting ready to retire, thinking about retiring. Mm-hmm. And and God put it in my car. And I knew it was God. Now, she saw me homeless. She saw me, Mm -hmm. you know, outdoors. She saw Mm -hmm. me, you know, she saw me at my worst. Mm -hmm. And usually a person wouldn't even look at a person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so true. But God. Mm -hmm. And we we, uh, got married. Uh, God put me back in the pasture six months later. And and I'll say this, you know, in in, in and I know it was God because uh, the, the preacher that I was uh, Baptist church, they always run preachers against one another. They always vote on preachers. Mm-hmm. And the preacher that I was running against, his wife, Superior Court Judge, and uh, and uh, everybody knew her. And I said, God, I can't, I can't fight this. You know, I, I don't, don't have no chance. And here I am driving down to this church at the cab every Sunday. But God said, you know what? I'm going to show you what I can do. Mm -hmm. And they elected that other pastor. But two weeks later, he decided he wasn't going to come. And they brought me in. And since I've been there, my wife, we got married. She still lives in Brooklyn because she has to retire. Right. And, I, and I'm in Kinston. But this, one thing that I know, when I went to this church, one member said, well, Reverend, you know this is a promiscuous church. I said, promiscuous? Mm-hmm. And she said, yes, this is a promiscuous church. And what I, what I know that God did, he put me in the middle of Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm-hmm. And they felt like they was going to have a field day with me. Mm-hmm. I'm here by myself and my wife and your wife. New York. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I tell you, in four years, God has kept me and has, God said, I'm going to show them mm-hmm. that there's somebody mm-hmm. that can live the life that's right. And I'm so thankful that it has taught me that when you give yourself to God, God will work things out. He will. Amen. But even, but even when you are having victory, victories in one area, 
nobody knows you but you. Right. And if you start getting satisfied with the demons that's on the inside of you. Mm, mm, mm. And I was fed up with the demons that was on the inside of me. Mm, mm, mm. And Paul said, physician, heal yourself. Mm, mm, mm. Ah, Lord, help us. Mm, I, just thank, mm, I just thank the Lord. I, I thank the Lord for your ministry. I, mm. I, was, I was telling my wife, I said, you know what? Uh, with, with you, Sister K, it's like you're not preaching, but you are. It's like you're sitting mm-hmm. down with somebody at the table. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And mama's spewing in logic and common sense to mm-hmm. the child. And I say, you know what? I listened to you mm-hmm. talk to another pastor in mm-hmm. California, and he was telling mm-hmm. me about his experience. And I said, you know what, God? This, 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 is, this is my answer. Amen. Oh, I, I just thank the Lord. I, Amen. Hold you on this phone this long, but I just thank mm, the Lord. Mm, mm. Well, thank you for sharing. We all need to hear this. And God's going to tune others in to hear this message because this is will for them to hear it. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, it's awesome. And, 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 you know, as I'm listening to you, the Lord reminded me. He said, now you see, Terry, after you deliver him from those spirits, you see how the line is free now? You don't have that interruption anymore. I said, that's right. Because exactly. you, know, see, you see that? It was, uh, it was a spirit wife. I knew it was. They do that from time to time. And it was them trying, trying to, to handle that delivery. But when it's your time, it's your time. They're exactly. just trying to win a losing battle. Lose your time. <laughs> I thank the Lord. So I'm I'm gonna be listening in and I, Okay. I just thank God for you. Uh, Amen. And then do me a favor, Pastor Hugh, since you're on an hour away. Sometime I can come visit your church, me and me and my daughter. Amen. Um, yeah. You know about an hour away in Kempton. I have That's relatives true. in Kempton too. Um uh-huh. if if uh just uh, have your wife, if she can find me over the internet, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure she know my website, either at the, you know, the treasuremike.org or how shalom, and she get the email address, just have her to send, send me your, your the address uh, of your church, I and, and, and as well as your phone number, your phone sure number, so, so whenever we decide to visit you, you know, I, I give you a heads up, I give you a call, okay? Um, that would be a blessing. That would be great. I would love meeting you since you ain't nothing but an hour away from us. That's it. Yep. That's it. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you, Jesus. All right. Well, you stay blessed and make sure you share this testimony with your wife. You I certainly you. will. I certainly <laughs> will. God All bless right. you. You Amen. too, Pastor. <laughs> Bye-bye. Praise God. That was so sweet.